In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the AI Hub deployment with Docker. First, you will hear about the different deployment options, which you can select according to your environment and preferences. Then, I will show you how to set up the deployment by editing configuration files. Then, I will deploy AI Hub on this machine using Docker Compose. There are different options for deploying AI Hub. The simplest one is called Docker Compose. You can essentially do this on your own computer or server as long as they have enough power to execute AI Hub. If your company already uses a Kubernetes cluster, that might be your first choice. We have templates for executing in Kubernetes too. The third option is using a cloud provider. AI Hub has templates for the most popular cloud providers so that you can run your AI Hub there. But in this example, we will work with Docker Compose. The Docker Compose deployment uses two main files. One is called docker-compose.yml. This defines the structure of the deployment. The other file is called .env. env is short for environment. In this .env file, you can enter your settings, change passwords, and other options. Another important entry is the profiles mechanism in env. Here you can simply select the modules of AI Hub that should run after the deployment. So, how do we deploy AI Hub with the docker-compose method? First, you will download an archive on the documentation page and unzip it. There, you will find the Docker Compose files to change. One is docker-compose.yml and the other is .env. If possible, make your changes in env. This is because a new version of AI Hub will probably have a different change to Docker Compose YML, and it is easier to merge your own changes in the .env file than changing both files or just the Docker Compose. Another important option is the licensing. Usually, nowadays, you use units licensing. Inside units licensing, again, there are some options like a login into Altair 1, a license file, or a local license proxy. There are options for all these. If you use the legacy rapid minor license option, there's also a setting for that. After configuring the deployment in the end file, you will run some initial commands by setting up the AI hub for the first time. And then, if this is successful, you can start deployment. While running the setup container, we will watch for Docker messages. After the deployment is done, we will go to the URL that was configured in the config file and log in with the credentials we set up. Then you can try out the components of your AI hub. So here, I already downloaded .env and Docker Compose YML. First, let's look at the .env file. This has the structure of the name of the setting then equals, and then the actual setting. Here, I'm calling my deployment HTTP AI Hub 10. So, this is the URL I will use later in the browser. I can change things like the email address of the webmaster, the time zone, and the license mode. Depending on the license mode, I must enter some information later. Here, we see the profiles mechanism. There are some examples, like the maximum and the minimum set. And in my case, this is the list of modules that I selected for my AI Hub deployment. As you can see, it's most of the modules. Below, we have things like secrets, passwords, usernames, and so on. Most of the time, you just search for secret and password information and only read some things. The other file is Docker Compose YML. This file has a specified structure, and the YML format defines this. As you can see, the configuration mainly refers to a variable from the .env file. Now, after I change the settings, if necessary, in the end file, I can go to a shell and start the deployment initialization. This happens with the command docker compose up minus d deployment in it. Minus d means detach, so it does everything in the background. Deployment init is the container that we run for this first initialization process. First, Docker creates some volumes and networks, and then it needs to download some modules from the internet. This will take a few minutes. And after that, we will be able to watch the logs of this deployment initialization. Okay, so the deployment initialization is running in the background. I am back in my shell, and now I will issue another command called docker compose logs to see the logs with the minus f for follow parameter. Now I will follow the logs of this deployment in it. So this is logging in detail what it is doing, and at some point, it will arrive at a successful state, 
or it will tell you about possible problems. For example, if you didn't correctly set up file access rights like described in the configuration, this would tell you about it and not end successfully. After some time, the deployment is done and it displays successfully finished. Now we can start the entire deployment. We do this by leaving out the deployment in it. The docker compose up minus D starts the entire deployment. And again, we will need to get some new files from the internet. This will take a few minutes and then all the components will be started. The deployment has been started and now I can log into the main menu of the newly deployed AI hub. The credentials are defined in the dot and file. So this is the main menu of AI hub. There are separate videos and lessons about the different components here. We see that the deployment has succeeded and we have admin rights because we can use the platform administration and the identity and security modules. We can click around in the AI hub and it is working. To summarize in this video, we saw the different deployment options and selected Docker Compose. We saw how the deployment of AI Hub can be configured in the .n file, how the deployment is being initialized the first time, and how it is being started after that. Thank you very much for watching.